to the Man Cave here at Wistful Vistas in beautiful suburban San Diego, California. Guess what we're looking at? <laughs> a lot of people pull a curtain off of it or something like that. But uh, it's kind of a warm and steamy man cave, so I want to get right to the gist of the product here, the program. And the purpose of this vlog is to introduce the 2021 Aprilia Tuono factory that now graces our artful presence and uh, give you a little background on how I ended up getting it here uh, or how I ended up selecting this machine and uh, also just a little bit about the overall journey and um, some of the other machines that we considered for a time. So what do you say we just get right to it? Let's, let's uh, discuss this. All right, other machines that were in the mix. What did I have in the funnel to kind of choose down and drill down on to say that uh, I was very interested in? Well, uh, the uh, other machines that were in the mix under consideration, of course, Aprilia has always been near and dear to my heart because I had a 2017 for the better part of uh, four years, almost five years, and uh, really enjoyed riding that bike, really enjoyed the aftermarket part supply for fiddling around with it a bit, sharing those adventures online in on my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, as many people will say, that V4 motor has just an intoxicating opera all of its own. Usually the gentlemen who are much more qualified than I that test them, rate them highly in all of the parameters, ergos, ride quality, and uh, etc. But they really love that engine sound. And I think that's how a lot of us get drawn in. And that extends right through the range, through the RSV range, all the way into the Tuono range. There are two, uh, two levels of Tuono right now. So the Tuono was near and dear to my heart. Let's put it that way. Other uh, machines in the uh, consideration bundle, uh, staying with Ducati, because Ducati is also near and dear to my heart. Uh, Ducati has a, a V2 and I thought that V2 might be really a great street machine, something that you could use on the street, uh, lightweight and uh, accessible for a sort of street performance. But the ergonomics, let's just say, aren't right for this old guy. So that one went out pretty quickly. Staying in the Ducati lineup, there's a new monster that's getting uh, great reviews and I can see why. I've ridden the earlier gens, enjoyed them with a couple of exceptions. There's a couple of technical things I wasn't that crazy about them on. Uh, and uh, the new one is light. It's perfect for just riding around on the street and doing the sort of uh, recreational riding that I do. The other machine was the Supersport. Uh, there is a new generation of Supersport, Supersport 950S, I think they're calling it. And that was up there. That was really under consideration. In fact, there's a little connection between this machine and my 2017 machine, Aprilia, and the Supersport. We'll talk about that later. Then other uh, brands, other companies that were really making the cut and under consideration were BMW, the S1000 Single R. I had a 2014 BMW, enjoyed it very much. In fact, it was one of the earliest applications of a semi-active suspension as this Aprilio has. Uh, like that quite a bit. Also, uh, in the BMW family, the R1250 and the R1250R, R1250 RS, I'm not too sure. Classic opposed uh, BMW. I've ridden the R19, uh, R9T, and uh, that's just a peach of a machine. Not particularly available, relatively expensive as well. But uh, I do like our local dealer a lot, but just not around that much. Uh, then the uh, others that are thrown into that mix were the Super Duke and ultimately the Triumph Speed Triple R. I think, we, I think they're all R's now in the USA. And that was really up there. I've ridden a, a previous gen Triumph Speed Triple. Really like that, uh, but the uh, new one I have not ridden got a lot of reviews, a lot of likes uh, of the professional staff and it was really up there. Relatively expensive, not that much different to this machine, and a couple of the major reasons that I didn't go in that uh, Triumph direction were A, 
about as much as the uh, Aprilia without the semi-active suspension and uh, B, the uh, fact that I just don't know much about them. I was, uh, there's a familiarity factor and I wasn't too sure about uh, what sort of aftermarket supply for modifications and things would be out there. So uh, by that process of elimination, sort of siphoning things down, sifting things down, I think is the right way they put it, I bring to you a 2021 Aprilia Tuono factory. Now, tell me what you think. Give me some comments. Okay, the Aprilia Ducati Supersport connection. Uh, Ducati introduced the Supersport about four years ago, I think, and I actually put a deposit down on one. I thought that was the perfect machine, gave you a chance to ride a Ducati with the fairing, feel really cool, really racy, and yet it had the ergos that were favorable for those of us who can't bend into pretzels anymore. <laughs> and you could stay in and ride on it for uh, quite a bit. I put that deposit down. There was a red and a pearl white available for whatever reason. I can't remember now because I think the reds are awesome too. But uh, I was really stuck on the idea of getting a pearl white and they just weren't getting those in. I think they made red exclusively for their first run or whatever. Uh, I stopped into uh, Grand Prix Motorcycles in San Diego and said, any news on the white uh, Super Sports coming out? And they said, no, no news of those yet, but have you seen the Aprilia? Now I had written an early Tuono, 2014 perhaps, or even a 2012, maybe even earlier than that. And all, it was a fine machine, a lot of fun, but my overriding remembrance of that particular ride was that seat was like sitting on a two by four. I mean, that was the hardest seat uh, that I had ever ridden on. And I mentioned that to them and they said, ah, they're much improved now. And yeah, people, they heard that uh, comment and you could get a comfort seat, yada, yada, yada. Would you like to take this one for a ride? I took that one for a ride, which was a uh, 2017 and Boy, oh boy, did that impress. Loved the sound, loved the ride, loved the responsiveness, loved the tech, and bought one. Put my deposit that I had on the Supersport onto the Tuono and didn't ever look back. Enjoyed uh, my entire ownership of that machine. Uh, therefore, that's part of the connection between uh, Ducati and Aprilia for me personally. Uh, didn't really realize the 2021s were available, went in again to Grand Prix Motorcycles. There's a pattern here, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> pay attention. There it was on the showroom floor, said, my gosh, they're in. He said, yes, uh, this is one of the very first we have in. Would you like to think about it? I said, okay. <laughs> I did more than think about it. Gave me a very good offer on uh, my machine. They are having problems getting machines in general uh, and used ones of uh, quality are a little difficult to come by. So I did well there and uh, they did well by me and I wrote it home. You can see my vlog, it'll be posting up before I put this one up of me riding that machine home and hear my comments about uh, various aspects of actually riding on Aprilia Tuono. So there you have it. Little full, full cycle uh, view of how I come to end up owning this machine. And I think the next time we talk about it, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna grab our little portable camera, go around and show you some of the details, some of the changes that are so good on it. And uh, then after that, uh, hopefully this week, we will get out and take it for a ride, do some little twisties. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, add a comment down below. I am as excited as a termite in a lumber yard. I think I've mentioned that, but let me scoot out of the way and let you take a look at this thing. Here it is, 2021 Aprilia Tuono Factory in my garage. Thank you.